The last time I got out of the house, I was in Dallas at the AIM conference in March. And who is it that kept me up late as usual, talking shop, but also how to ride a mechanical bull? And uh, that is my next guest here, Mike Prentice. He's made a career out of helping organizations successfully deploy automation. I know he probably understood 100% of what Harpreet just said, uh, but uh, he was at IBM for uh, quite a while, and he is currently one of the stars at the IBM business uh, partner Integro, who recently became part of Innovative Discovery. And so uh, I could go on and on, but I think it's better that we hear from Mike who uh, has uh, another piece of this puzzle of realizing the promise. Mike? Thank you, David. So what I want to do is extend upon and add to the conversations that have had and you will be having. So the first part that we wanna talk about is the promise of intelligent automation. You've already heard parts of it. I'm gonna to extend to it. And interestingly enough, I'm gonna really kind of play off a lot of what Colin was talking about with design thinking. But first, intelligent automation. What you wind up hearing a lot about is a lot of technology, BPM, IBM, intelligent capture, AI, machine learning, RPA, containers, SaaS, hybrid cloud, holy cow, there's a lot of technology. But what you did hear early on is, well, that's great with all this technology, how do we make it work? And it's trying to balance technology versus business needs. And what I'm gonna try and focus on this part is the business needs. Understand your business objectives and how they tie to desired outcomes. Your strategic and tactical goals are very important to understand, comprehend, and then we're gonna use a set of methodologies. So it's very important to understand the one, Colin talked about design thinking, and I'm gonna talk about a couple others. And as, it, as the title alluded to, is about customer journey mapping. But first, I wanna talk about building a context around an empathy map. Now, design thinking also uses empathy maps, so it's very important to understand there's a lot of overlap with all this, but first, why an empathy map? It's about understanding your customer, knowing your customer, knowing what they are, who they are. What does it mean to create an empathy map? Well, here's a picture of it over there on, on the right, and I'm gonna to go to a little bit detail on this for a moment, but just kind of understand what, what it is that you're looking to do. You wanna understand and empathize with a person. Now, the first thing you should notice right off the bat in the middle of that circle is the name Jamie. So we're gonna talk about a real person. And we're gonna talk about a real person that interacts with you, whether that's an internal employee or external to your organization. And we wanna understand how they think, what they say, what they do, and how they feel. Now, this particular example here is about buying a TV. We've all bought a TV. So what do you think? And I know a lot of this is a little fuzzy. It's the, these, in, this side information is all over the internet. I just grabbed one picture just to give you a concept. But what do they think? Is, is am I wasting too much time? Is there too, there's too many acronyms? That should sound familiar. Which one's the best for me? What do they say? What, you know, what do you think? What size is the best? Um, what do they do? Well, they do research. They talk to friends. They compare products. And what do they feel? I like feel fear and excitement. That seems like a contradictory set of feelings, right? Well, no, you're, you're afraid of spending $3,000 on a TV, but you're really excited about watching your favorite show or sports program in a, that type of, of view. So what that means is what we're all used to seeing is when we build a system and saying, hey, there's a legal user, right? Our legal user is gonna come in, they're gonna do this. No, what we're identifying is Sarah from legal. So you know Sarah, she's the one that comes in and she brings the donuts on Thursday and she talks about her big backpacking uh, adventures that she's been on. She's not really married yet. She's kind of thinking about it. Uh, she's really dedicated to her legal profession. She's gone to several outside conferences. She understands what's going on, really passionate about this one aspect within legal specifically. Know some things about uh, UIs and really kind of more modern, but likes things to be t given to her, told what to do because she's got a lot of stuff going on. Well, that's a very different description than legal user. You know, we're going to give them a screen, they're going to be able to see a matter, and they can go look and do their stuff that they do, right? Well, when we understand what the person is doing, who they are, what they think, what they feel, we as an overall solution practitioner group trying to deliver a business problem, it changes our perspective. We start to understand them and what they want to do and how we need to serve them better. So when you're taking, say, a 
as Colin pointed out, design thinking, when you want to come up with ideas, that's great. You come up with ideas, now have ideas around what Sarah might want. And that is really where things can come to play. The next part, when we look at this, is a journey map. So a lot of information to go in here. Now we've defined our empathy. We know the people that are gonna interact with our solution in some way, shape or form. So what do we do? Well, we're gonna define a journey. Well, what the heck is a journey? I use this phrase called a value stream. Depends on where in the business world you come from. A value stream is something that derives value from the, for the business. It's either a process. It's important to understand that the process does not mean a digital workflow. It means a business process. There could be people involved. There could be interactions. It could be delivery trucks. It could be power coming into the building. It's anything that goes into this process. And depending on type of value stream, you know, it could be cost associated to it or just a basic diagram. Why am I talking about this? Understand the scope of what you're going to try and look at and understand. This journey map ties to your business directives, your business objectives. We're trying to increase customer service or customer satisfaction. Great, around what? Well, our online orders. We, would, we seem to have a lot of issues with online orders. They're not generating the revenue that we want. Oh, so we want customer service and increased revenue. So let's look at the order process. Okay, now we have a journey map. And what are we doing this for? Well, we understand what they're doing, the, the actions of our users, i.e. our empathy maps, touch points. What do they do? Who do they interact with? Or what do they interact with? Again, their emotions. And then we determine pain points and then eventually solutions. So let's take a little bit closer look at all this. So here's our journey map. Lots of information all on here. So the first part we want to talk about is the persona. So who are we going to be looking at this process from? What's their point of view when they come in and look at this? And then we talk about a scenario. So, okay, so that's great. We're going to talk about the you know online order process for whatever organization it is, whether it's buying insurance, going to Amazon, signing up for an electrical uh, usage or, or cable or whatever it might be. And you determine the scenario, you just kind of put a little box around it. So, you know, where do we really start? Where does the customer journey start? Does it start when they click buy? Does it start when they go to the website? Does it start when they buy a car? Does it start when they turn 16 and they're old enough to start driving? Where do you want to start? There's no right or wrong answer. You need to determine where you want to start. And of course, where do you want to end? You want to end, you know, when, when they say, I, I've taken their payment, and, you know, we're out, we're done, that's all we care about. Do we want to have follow? Well, what's follow? What does that mean? Do we go past the point of them canceling service? Well, where do we want to end? Again, the same thing. Once you define the boundaries, now we go into it. And you create these phases, as you see, with the blue, the blue parts on top. And then we look at the actions. What does Joe do? In case you can't read it, this is Joe. Joe is doing stuff with our context. What is he doing? Everything that he does, whether it's you know logging into a website, going into a store, receiving something in the mail, whatever it might be, all of these actions are written down, identified, and that helps us scope this problem. And then we get into what system interactions exist, right? So we have our technical part in here. It's very important though, when we're doing this, we're not focusing on technology. We're truly just identifying the technology aspects used. They use this URL. Okay, that's tied to our SAP system. Great, SAP system. Um, oh, they're, they're going into over here. So they're using our CRM system. Great. Oh, we're using the portal online purchasing program. Okay, that's a custom app. Great, we'll just identify these. That's important to do the identification. So then we have this all set up. We know what they're doing and we know the systems they're working with. And then how do they feel? Is this a great interaction? Is it a negative interaction or is it a neutral interaction? It's really, for this part, that simple. These parts are very important to understand. This, this can help tie in because it's tying back again. What's our objectives? Our objectives are increase customer satisfaction and increase revenue, okay? so. Sometimes it's assumed they can go hand in hand, but there are other ways to increase revenue, right? We can either increase sales or decrease costs. So that's important to know. So now that we have this part, now we can identify pain points. Great, okay. Now that we've gone through all this, what are the pains that we're aware of? Or what pains do you think we could also see just because they think it's a good experience? 
it still might be seven clicks when you look at it, realize it could be two. So th there's things to keep in mind along with that when you identify all these pain points. It's important to step back, look at this from the outside. So then we have the end result. What do we get when we come back from all of this journey map? Well, first, we've identified personas, a point of view. We understand their hearts and their minds. So this persona part, let's, let's back up just a little bit to tie some things together. So we've identified our objectives, we've identified personas, users, both internal and external, and we define our journey. We know how our users think and feel. We can come out of this and go, you know, I, I have an idea of a solution. Well, you can jump right into a design thinking workshop and you already have the personas defined, defined also specifically for the problem scope you want to look into. Well, how great is that? You're not wasting a lot of effort doing from one methodology to another methodology to another methodology. A lot of these work together. A journey map can actually help define a scope for you to use in design thinking. And again, the result here, what is this big old sticker board that's all up in here? This process of journey mapping is a really kind of, it's a fun workshop where you use sticky notes. Everyone kind of comes into the process and puts them up into the little section of what they think and feel. And there's, it's a collaborative effort. You work through this to try to understand. And it's important to understand the process view that you are looking at is, you know, in a sense, a value stream. This, this is adding value into the system into the business and you're looking to increase and create awareness around those parts that you want to add additional value or reduce waste you know the, these processes here could help you identify a whole set of opportunity and challenges maybe coming out of this exercise you've identified a roadmap better yet a vision to know where you'd like to be going and how you want to get there so um what I, you, you kind of look at it this way. So we come into this journey map and we identify three problems. Wow, we, we identify that our, our delivery system is ineffective. It, it goes through five systems because we identify there's five touch points in there. The user thinks it's great because you know they get their product, it's shipped relatively on time and they seem it's fine. But we see a problem. We see that the fact that the delivery process is ineffective. We see that the, the person is really uncomfortable with this, get, you know, I'm trying to find a product and I can't find it. I have to search three or four times. And then we realize, you know, how do they get in here? You know, our journey map maybe isn't really going to the farthest extent to the left. Maybe we need to start doing marketing campaigns to bring them to us. Okay, so during this journey map exercise, we identified three key things that we really could work on. Great. Roadmap vision, we know what we wanna do. Now we go to the next thing. Great, now that we've identified these three, great, what does that mean? What it means is this, we look at our pain points around the delivery system. We have to enter into three different systems. Entering into a system in a default manual way, that should trigger all the techie people going, sounds like RPA. Oh, so we have a point solution there. The, the customer experience around searching is really cumbersome and, and ineffective. Well, for those people who aware content and searching and knowledge management, this should just be bringing all kinds of bells in your head. Oh, we know how to fix this. We can definitely achieve this. And then the upfront, well, maybe we need to have some marketing programs. Maybe we need to have a process to that we're gonna enhance the marketing program to help funnel them into our main website. We come out with three initiatives. We get them back to our business objectives of what we're trying to do, increase customer satisfaction, increase revenue. Well. The revenue we're gonna say right off the bat is, hey, revenue is about getting people in. We get more people in, we'll increase revenue, we'll worry about the cost later. Jack up the revenue, put money in the marketing, program one. Two, this is delivery, these costs are just getting out of hand. So we RPA the, the delivery part and we, we put that solution in place. Now our costs are down, revenue's up, customers are now getting much happier, right? Instead of a standard delivery time of three to five days, it's one to three days. And they like the experience coming in. Now the change is we need to get them to buy more stuff. Remember that searching problem we talked about day three, you know, step three. So now we dump in this, this whole other context around helping them find what they want and more. Okay, so now we've created additional revenue, we've decreased cost, cost and now we've increased the scope of revenue. 
you know, while it's a fictitious example, that's a pretty great outcome. And it's again, tied to business outcomes. The technology is the last conversation in here. The project that needs to be implemented is the same projects that we all know. We, we implement RPA, you know how to do all this. You, you, you determine the data coming in, you the systems you wanna work with, you define the interfaces, you program them and you measure the results. And then you know what the results are coming in as mentioned in the question earlier when asked about Ryan, did you measure before and after? Yeah, you better. So again, we back all of this stuff up and we come to the end. The business objectives have been reached. We start with business goals and objectives. We do an identification of the what goals and objectives tied to the value stream, the business process that we're looking to achieve. And then we know our customer. Remember, internal customers count too. And then we look how they impact and interact with our system. Then we have focused opportunities and we have solutions that we can deliver. And what you get is this nice big circle that kind of flows all around that everyone likes to see circles. We know what we're doing. We get our goals, identify a problem, know our customer and know their pain points, know their problems, know what we want to do. And we have focused opportunities, focused on what we want to do and what we want to achieve. And then when they're done, we go back. Did our strategic goals and objectives change? No, probably because we were so successful before that they want to focus on different things. And, and you just circle around through this. So this is how it all, all the process comes together. Again, journey mapping is a, is a way of a, doing identification, making sure that you're tying. I Absolutely, there's a lot of topics that you can add into this. Design thinking and customer journey mapping have a lot of synergies in together. You identify a problem, like we said about delivery. Maybe we don't really know what the delivery problem is. We just know we have one. Then you run a design thinking workshop to take the problem, because design thinking, you scope a problem to know what we're going to talk about. We have a scope of delivery problem. And then we just go through, come up with different ideas, thoughts, concepts of how we want to address it. And then now we have a focus thing and to, to focus on and work on and deliver. So with all that, if you have any other questions, you know how to reach me. And if a lot of these concepts seem confusing or you'd like more detail, Honestly, <clears throat> type into Google or whatever your favorite search engine is, any of these concepts, you will be more than happy with the wealth of information that exists publicly and readily available, including the IBM Garage site, which their information is public. And I've used that and used many others to help understand and deliver this content. Thank you very much, Mike. I, uh, uh, I, I really like how you brought all these elements together. You've helped tie together our morning session, bringing in uh, the technology from uh, Kemper and, uh, and the, the business uh, learnings from, uh, uh, from Auto Owners Insurance and, and tying it all together. So thank you so much, Mike, for, for doing that.